to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All this many West Branch City Council in order. Roll call. Browner. Raleigh. Here. Heitmeyer. Here. Lees. Here. Waterman. Here. Would you perfect approve the agenda? Support. The motion was support. No discussion. Roll call. Raleigh. Aye. Heitmeyer. Aye. Lees. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Motion carried. Consent agenda. Motion approved is presented. Support. Motion with support to approve approved consent agenda items 1 through 15. Uh, I'm going to skip those tonight, reading all those because we've got a long agenda. Is there <laughs> any discussion? Roll call. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? Aye. Motion carried. Staff reports. Dan? Um, we took a drive around yesterday afternoon. It looks like they're pretty much wrapping up all the street projects. Um, and we got an email from Matt today, and he indicated the same thing, that they're just doing some final cleanup work and work on some shoulders and driveways. And um, there's a storm sewer that needs to go in on South Broadway that they're going to start working on. And they look like they may be done and out of there in just a couple more weeks. So that would be good to get all the orange cones removed. Um, and also I sent out the budget materials to the department heads so they can start working on that. And that soon will be the season to be having meetings every week to talk about that. Randy's not here. Yes. Uh, the only thing I have is <laughs> that away from me. <laughs> is uh we had the Cub Scouts come to the <laughs> place. I got I got shut off. Alright. I turned it back on. We had the Cub Scouts go through the police department tonight. Uh, Sergeant Boak gave them a tour of the local Cub Scouts, so they kinda had their badge for local government going through the police department tonight. That's so, all that I have. May have anything for Jess? Sean. Got some commercial inspections done today and a couple lined up for next week. Uh, some of them are rentals and others are just businesses themselves. And then on the fire side, we got the cement down. First half of the project. Uh, storage building out of the training site. And we've gotten everyone through pretty much all but one person through our driver operator training up at the fire station. Want to have anything for Sean? Kelly, you got anything? No. Leslie? No. Okay. Rick, you got anything going on? No, sir. Rose? Nothing. Grace? No. Yep, good. Well, all right. Community reports. Chelsea, you're up. Good evening. Uh, Chelsea LaRue with the Greater Burlington Convention and Visitors Bureau. And just here tonight to give you um, the fall update of what we've been working on at the CVB throughout this year so far. Um, so just, we'll just start with some by the numbers. Um, in 2018, the CVB has been able to award a little over $84,000 in grant dollars. Um, this includes the Regional Sports Authority District Grant, which is um, state dollars that we re have been able to receive the last couple years to help our um, local sporting events. And this also includes the community event funding program where the CVB sets aside a portion of our budget each year uh, to support these events. Um, we also created a brand new uh, grant funding program at the CVB this year. We called it the Incentive Fund. We knew there were a lot of organizations in town that were under new management or new leadership that were working really hard and thinking outside the box to create new events. Um, normally with our community event funding dollars, we only award those once a year. Um, we just did the 2019 funding, so we didn't want these new organizations to be um, 
not be able to bring in a brand new event to the community because of that timeline. So the incentive fund was something that they could apply for throughout the year. We had a pretty good response rate. So overall, we, uh, through those four different grant programs, we awarded 34 different events um, to help support their causes. These events brought in a little over 69,000 visitors to the area. And we know these visitors stay about an average of one and a half days. So they're typically coming for a specific reason and then adding an extra day or half day um, to their time while they're here in the area exploring. These events also help generate over 10,000 hotel room nights, which is an estimated $15.3 million um, generated for the community. The CVB has also worked really hard this year um, to mail community guides. Um, we've been based on direct requests for our guides we've mailed out over 12,000 um, guides um, this is a significant increase from where we've been in the past in the past it's been about three to four thousand guides that we've mailed out um, a lot of this is because we started a new partnership with the state tourism office this year so now when somebody goes to traveliowa.com and request the state guide they can also request our local burlington west burlington community guide we've sent out over 9,000 guides just because of this new partnership with the state office um, these guides have been sent to 28 different countries 47 states including um, washington dc puerto rico and the u.s virgin islands so that's pretty exciting then when we look at the numbers at the welcome center we've had just shy of 10,000 visitors at the welcome center but they're coming from 30 different countries and 49 different states. So we definitely are getting um, a national and international audience looking at our community and experiencing this. Um, I used to always say our international visitors were coming because of the river boats, but unfortunately this year, um, two of those were canceled because of the high river levels. So I can't say that for this year. Um, but when research is telling the state tourism office that people are kind of tired of exploring Europe, they're ready to explore America, and then one of the top attra attractions in America is the Mississippi River. I think these numbers are proving that to be pretty true. Um, so they want to experience the river and what those river communities have to offer, so that's pretty exciting. And then our digital community guide has also seen a little over 23,000 views. Um, people are looking at it in Burlington, so that means once they're here, they're exploring that to figure out what else to do while they're here in the community. Um, also, Annapolis, Maryland is one of the top places they're viewing it, Des Moines, Davenport, and Chicago, which um, Des Moines, Davenport, and Chicago correlate very well with our marketing um, placements and campaigns there. One of the new things we did this year is we worked with uh, the RecPlex and um, a new softball tournament organization to create a brand new tournament called Kiss the Cup. Um, what we were hearing at the RecPlex is a lot of attendance numbers were down and we we're hearing um, the teams that were playing here were saying there wasn't a ton of good competition and so they either weren't playing here and weren't playing here as often anymore. So we strategized and um, created an invitational only tournament where these teams got to play at the RecPlex for free with the requirement of staying in one of our local hotels. And we only solicited um, top tier teams uh, from Iowa, Illinois, and Missouri. And we also ended up getting one team from Wisconsin. So our goal for the first year was 34 teams. We ended up with 29, uh, which we thought that was pretty successful. We had 10 U and 12 U teams. They came from St. Louis, Chicago, Kansas City, Wisconsin, Des Moines, along with um, some other areas closer to us. So um, we had a really good response rate and we're already really excited to start planning the 2019 event there. Um, looking to also add 14U and be a little bit um, stricter with um, their competition level and where they're staying and all those sorts of things. We also hosted our very first Gus Macker tournament, our, the National 3-3 three three Basketball Tournament, and that was a great weekend. Uh, for year one, we had 137 teams, which equates to 544 players that came from 110 different cities and seven different states. Um, kids and adults had a great time over the two-day event. Um, Macker staff kept was very impressed for our first year event and we had a lot of teams from the Peoria market because Peoria used to have a tournament that they've canceled over the last couple years and one team in particular was talking to Macker staff and that team is typically pretty critical of the Macker tournaments but they were very impressed and had nothing but fantastic things to say 
um, about our event. So we're really excited to continue years two and three of our contract with Gus Macker and continue to grow those events and attract even more people to our area and, and watch that event continue to grow. In, sep or in late October, uh, the State Tourism Office and the Iowa Economic Development Authority released our visitor expenditure numbers for 2017. And as a reminder, these are always a year behind and U.S. Travel Association uh, compiles these together. So for 2017, visitor expenditures in Des Moines County were $138.93 million. This is a 1.85% increase over 2016. Um, so as I'll go into here in a little bit, even though hotel motel occupancy has been down over the last year and a half or so, visitors are still coming to the area and still spending quite a few dollars while they're here in the area. Uh, these visitor expenditures help support a little over a thousand jobs in the Des Moines County area that are directly tourism related and help um, contribute over $9 million in state and local taxes. And we continue to sit about 13th um, out of the 99 counties for our tourism expenditures. Uh, this graph does show your hotel motel occupancy numbers, and I've tried to go pre-Iowa fertilizer. That's the light blue graph on the left-hand side to kind of give a picture of what it was before our numbers were unnaturally inflated there. And then the dark navy blue uh, graph is 2018. So you'll, you do notice a drop there. Um, but year-to-date, our September um, occupancy is about 52.9%. That is down 10.6% over 2017. Um, and looking statewide year to date, September occupancy was 60.4% down 1.4. Um, so we are still experiencing um, the Iowa fertilizer lull there and trying to brainstorm how we can bring visitors back to the area and increase those numbers at the, at the hotels. And um, looking at this a little bit different way um, to kind of put the numbers behind what that 52% looks like, uh, there are so if you take 52% times 836 hotel rooms that we have in Des Moines County, it's an average of 442 rooms that are booked every night uh, here in the community. If you average that two people per hotel room, that's 884 visitors that are in our community each night. And the State Tourism Office tells us that uh, travel parties spend about $142 a day while they're out on a trip. So that equates to about 125000 um, $528 average economic impact um, just based on people staying in our hotel rooms. So looking ahead at some things that we're still working on and can, will continue to in 2019, uh, we did hire a consulting firm to work on a sports market study for us. Uh, we know the youth sports market is kind of a niche of Greater Burlington, especially with the new indoor complex coming online uh, with the turf here very soon. Uh, I just received the draft report of that market study yesterday, so we're in the process of reviewing that and meeting with the consulting team to get their final recommendations. Um, they did look at facilities within a 100-mile radius of us. What are they doing that maybe we can tweak and make work for us and also have some marketing ideas within that proposal as well? Uh, we'll bring a committee together to kind of continue to analyze that and create a strategy moving forward. Uh, we also created a kind of a housing bureau. Um, one thing you were hearing from a lot of the sports uh, teams over the last year or so was that booking hotel rooms for these teams is kind of difficult. Um, yes, I can help them set up blocks, but then they've got to go to maybe four different websites to find out what those hotels have to offer, look at their pricing, and book directly from the hotel website. So we did a little industry research and found a company that allows us to essentially create a customizable website for every event that comes to our community. So when I set up the room block, I can put all of that information in one website. The teams can see all of the hotels that are participating, all of the room rates, all of the different styles of rooms with photos and amenities and all of that and book right there from one website. Um, we've had pretty good success with it. We tested it with a few different events this year and so we're ready to take that to a larger level and continue to work with the teams that way. And just continuing to learn from our different event organizers, whether that's sports. We also have an arts and entertainment meeting coming up here very soon, continuing to learn from them and how the CVB can be a better partner with their events and helping them grow and helping us all work together to bring more visitors to the area. So with that, I'll entertain any questions that you might have. That's good. Any questions or comments? 
Uh, I guess one more thing to share. Um, I did also get word late yesterday um, about Fireball Run, uh, the TV, Amazon streaming TV show that we filmed last September. Then the next few weeks, I should receive access to the drafts of all of those episodes so we can pick one. And then we're hoping to have a premiere reveal party um, in early December to kind of wrap that all up. Just one comment. Um, I get all these brochure, brochures sent to me about river cruises and a lot of them show, you know, uh, river boats coming up or going down, but there's never any, there aren't any designated stops in Burlington on those. We are a stop um, pretty regularly for the American Queen. Uh, we, there. It doesn't show it though on their I In their ads, that. yeah. I'm not sure how they pick which it's cities show on there. Hannibal or Davenport. You know, there's a, never shows a stop in here for the 2019 cruises. I know when you go on their website and you look at the in specific itineraries um, for certain dates, we do show up on their website that way. Um, we have um, five dockings on the calendar for next year for the American Queen and their sister ship, the American Duchess. So. so then there's also, I think Viking is trying to get a longboat. That's. It's the rumor that's kind of popped back up. Um, a few years ago, they were working really hard on that, and then they went pretty silent. Um, they were running into some roadblocks with getting the right permits to be able to operate a vessel on the American water since they're a European uh, company. Um, but I think they're trying to work through that. Um, so we, we are still in conversations with them to try to get that vessel to come here as well. Well, on those brochures that Hans talks about, you think that since we've got the crookedest street that and we're in Ripley's, believe it or not, that would be some sort of an advertisement for them to come and you would, try it out. You would think so, yeah. Well, thank you. Good update. Thank you. Okay, anyone wanting to address the council matters that are not on the agenda tonight? Everybody here, we'll go to new business. And the first is a presentation of the annual audit report for fiscal 1718. Sarah Beckman. Hi, I'm Sarah Beckman. I'm the quality control partner at CPA Associates that reviewed your audit report. Uh, Tracy and Kim could not be here tonight, so I'm there. I'm the replacement. I am wanted to report that we did an un we had an unqualified audit opinion on the cash basis. Uh, our audit report is on page two of the packet you received. And I will entertain any questions that you might have regarding the report. I know you had access to it. Hopefully before tonight you had a chance to look at it. Nothing outstanding in it, right? There is not. Good. And we had great cooperation from your staff and we really appreciate all the hard work that they put into helping make this audit process go smoothly, so. Anybody have any questions? I know Leslie sent it out on electronically a couple of weeks ago and the draft, and this is the final. Draft. Final, and it hasn't changed, it hasn't since, changed. <laughs> since the draft was sent. But. I'll entertain a motion to accept the report. Support. Motion support. support. Any discussion? Roll call. Please. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Heitmeyer. Or Raleigh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Raleigh. Aye. Heitmeyer. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you very Thank much. You. Sweet and painless, right? Because it was. <laughs> All right. Now comes the painful part, probably. Josh. <laughs> I have number two is consider renewal health and dental insurance and Josh is with us. Assumed with that introduction that it was my turn. Um, <laughs> good evening. Thank you uh, for having me. Josh Budke from True North. Um, here to discuss the health insurance and dental insurance renewal for 2019. Um, and Leslie, I'm the this information in their they, packet they have that in front of us. okay fantastic in front of us. Um, so last year at this time um, the council voted on moving from Blue Cross and Blue Shield to 
to Aetna. Uh, this is our first renewal with the Aetna um, health insurance program. Um, if we are to continue with the same level of coverage with Aetna, we are looking at uh, a 10 percent increase to maintain that coverage. Um, we have looked at options. Um, we're showing on this sheet if we were to move back to Blue Cross. Um, comparable options you can see. Uh, so the third, the third column over uh, the 3,000 PPO gold plan, um, a slightly reduced deductible and out-of-pocket maximum. Um, but it is, uh, as you can see, a 37% increase. The fourth and last column would be a higher deductible and out-of-pocket than we currently have in place at 4,500. Um, if we were to move that direction, we would be looking at 19.68%. At um, last year, when um, the decision to move to Aetna was made, uh, we were roughly at a, about a $60,000 difference between Blue Cross and Aetna. Um, the increases we have seen from Blue Cross have been larger than what we've been seeing with, with Aetna um, and the cities that we represent with, with that program. So you will see that's where there's a continued, uh, a, a larger gap between the, the Aetna um, and Blue Cross, uh, the comparable policy there. Um, so roughly $72,000 at, at this year. Um, in comparison, again, from, from Aetna to Blue Cross. Are there any initial questions in regards to the, the health insurance? Dan, have we had many problems with the employees? You know, not really. Um, not there's been, as I mentioned in my memo, there's been some uh, practice of them sending letters to the employees saying a big expense isn't covered and then they call and then they cover it. And I've expressed displeasure with, to Josh and to uh, an Aetna representative I've met when I was in Baltimore and told them that that causes undue stress and they should try to fix that. Um, the guy in Baltimore wrote it down. It probably didn't go any farther than his notebook <laughs> the day I wrote it down. But um, Josh indicated to me that as this, that with the switch over and more and more cities getting on that that possibly could get better over time. Um, it it kind of, I, I, it's been, it's been less lately, but we've had less big claims lately. So I can't tell if it's that or just so we haven't had any claims, but as far as I know, everybody's got pretty much everything covered eventually. And we have shared that feedback with the local represent the Aetna representatives as well in regards to having employees with covered services um, being told that services are covered and then having that, that letter. And as Dan mentioned, ultimately they're being covered, but we're working with them to, to understand the disconnect and why that we have that additional step that employees need to make. Other than that, I'm <laughs> recommending we we uh, go with this renewal, and if we do it before Thanksgiving, we save 3%. So. Um, yes, thank you. So uh, I should have mentioned that the number at 10% is based on um, having everything in place for them before Thanksgiving. 13% was the initial um, offering if um, we, uh, we wait past that deadline. Essentially, they're, they're giving some credit to being able to administratively have renewals taken, taken care of prior to, prior to Thanksgiving. Um, so that's almost another $8,000 if, if we wait until after Thanksgiving. Correct, yes. Instead of yes. 26000 be about thirty four thirty five thousand. Mm -hmm. Last year, we did maintain the dental coverage um, with Blue Cross, with Blue Dental. Um, we are not seeing an increase in their overall rates. We have um, a couple um, city employees with children that are um, going from 18 to 19 years old, so they will see a very small increase um, as they're now rated as an adult, but overall the, the dental increase 
uh, excuse me, the dental is not increasing. I didn't mention that in my memo, but with no increase, it, I recommend approving that as well. Take a motion then, approve. So move. The board. Motion to support. <coughs> Any further discussions, questions? Roll call. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? <coughs> Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Carrie. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Josh. <coughs> Item number three, presentation of TIF planning report by Spear Financial. Maggie, you're up. Good evening. I'm going to pass these out. Uh, you're going to maybe take one and pass that down. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I apologize for not being here early enough to pass it on myself. So and luckily, no cops saw me running late. So <laughs> <laughs> I was following the speech. They told me I would be here just at 6 p.m. So you, you made it. I did. <laughs> Um, I'm Maggie Berger with Spear Financial, and it's that time of the year uh, that Leslie is going to be certifying to your TIF district. So at that point in time, uh, we go ahead and bring out your TIF and debt report um, so that we can just kind of walk you through and make sure that you don't have any questions. We think this is great information for the mayor and council to have in case there's questions out in your community. We start with our red pages, and this is our general obligation debt. Uh, we start right here in the first column. The 2008 is an SRF. It was for some general obligation water improvement bonds, so you did do those with the GO. The current interest rate on those bonds is 2%, and um, they were issued on uh, September 10th of 2008. We give you the principal, we give you the principal and interest. We do the same for your other outstanding general obligation debt. There's the 2011A, the 11B, the 13A. I should say the 8s, the 11s, um, and, and both of the 2011s are callable at this time, meaning you could pay them off if you had money ahead. You could pay down on them if you had money ahead. You've hit the call period. Um, all of them are 2%, 2.11, 2.83, very low interest rates. There would no, be no savings to do any kind of a refunding at this point in time, so we would not recommend that. The 2013 bond is going to become callable after you make the June 1st, 2019 payment, and that's why that underline is there. Um, again, that's a 2% interest rate, so we, we don't recommend uh, that being paid off or paid down at this time. You also have a 2016 uh, general fund equipment lease. That just has a couple of uh, payments left, one larger one in 19, a very small one or final payment in 20. And then on the page two, uh, you have the 2017 bond that is outstanding. Now this one you just took out about a year ago, year and a half ago. This is not callable until 2024, but again, a very low interest rate at 2.30. So our office continues to monitor that. And as we get close to that 2024 date, we'll look at interest rates. And if they happen to bottomed out at that point in time and are at you know 1%, we'll look and see if there's any savings. I don't think that we'll be in a 1% interest rate market in 2024, but we'll all keep our fingers crossed on that. So uh, we then give you total principal, total principal and interest. Um, and then this is where we start to buy this debt down, meaning we bring in sources of revenue to help offset. As you can see in the far right column, you don't levy any property taxes for your general obligation, that debt that is outstanding. So you bring in TIF revenue, and that is yellow because it's going to correspond with a yellow uh, form that we have down the, down the way here. We bring in local option sales tax. You have a small amount of general fund revenue, sewer fund revenue, and water fund revenue um, coming in to offset. So again, you've got total principal and interest owed, but you bring in sources of revenue to make that payment so that you do not have to levy anything in the property taxes. If we go on to our orange pages, this is our revenue debt that is outstanding. I want to remind you revenue debt in this format does not count against the city's debt capacity. You have a 2008 water revenue. So you did in 2008 
part of the project with some general obligation, part of it with water revenue. So this is callable as well and has an interest rate of 2%. You have the 2017, which was a much larger $10,985,000 sewer revenue SRF. That is going to start uh, making principal payments here in June of 2019. The call feature on this one, again, SRF, the State Revolving Fund, their call is about 10 years after the time that you take the, the loan out. Um, we do show this being called after June 1st of 2028. We will clarify that with the SRF as that, that date approaches and gets closer. They always say it's 10 years, but then they always say, it's well, it's 10 years after you've, you finally have drawn on the loan, this and that. So we want to make sure that um, it's going to be somewhere in that 2027 to 2028 range. Um, this is at a 2% and it is locked in. All of your interest rates on all of your debt are locked in, meaning that they cannot change unless you take action to change them um, in the form of a refunding. And, and we've talked that there's really no savings there for that. I do want to point out that you pay the water revenue debt with water revenues. You pay the sewer revenue debt with sewer revenues. And again, leading you to that larger right-hand column that says zero property taxes. Because these are revenue debts, it is, um, the council has resolved that you are going to pay these with water and sewer revenues and, and nothing else. We go on to our purple pages. This is where we talk about TIF rebate obligations. He has two rebate obligations outstanding for the Blackhawk urban renewal area. One of them is Millennial Hall, uh, I'm sorry, Millennium Hall on, um, with campus community developers and one is Black Hawk Tower. Uh, so the way that we have these is they are set up at their annual appropriation. That means just the amount that you owe in a rebate every year is what counts against your debt capacity, not the overall amount. The value in fiscal year 19 on Millennium Hall is $515. $1,000 that does go up to $520,000 and you are paying back 75% of the applicable TIF taxes that they're paying in. So there is a tax rate and then there is a TIF tax rate and your rebate is calculated on that TIF tax rate and you can rebate back 75% of that amount. And in this uh, fiscal year, that's $10,827. In next fiscal year, it's actually $10,757 um, due to some uh, differences uh, with rollback, things like that. Next year, um, your or, I'm sorry, going on to Blackhawk Tower, our value in fiscal year 2019 is $2,261,000. But now next year, you see that value went up to $2,667,000. And that very well, that difference of about $400,000 could be finalizing that project, getting the final construction done in a, in a different year than, than originally thought. So your rebate this year at 95% is $60,113, but it's $69,793 next year at that higher rate. All Both of these are subject to what's called multi-residential rollback. And we do provide that down to you at the bottom because I want everyone to remember that a few years ago, the legislature said we're going to take multi-residential properties like this and we're going to take them from commercial, which we had a 90% rollback or a 10% rollback at 90%, and we're going to roll them back down to residential to meet up with residential. In that, in 19, the multi-residential rollback is 78, so you're only going to pay on 78%. Next year, just 75, and it goes down and down till in fiscal year 2024, it merges with residential. As you can see, the last 2023 amount is 63.75. Currently in residential, we're at 55%. We're not sure where that's gonna merge yet, if that merges in the 50s, or if that merges in the 60s, or somewhere in between. What that really means is, ultimately, if it merges a little bit higher in the 60s, residents, personal homes, single family homes, are going to pay more in taxes because their rollback is going to be less, meaning they are going to owe on more of their home's value than they owe right now taxes on. So just wanna kind of point that out that we don't really know where that's gonna be, 
but we will um, as time kind of clicks away. Can I ask you, Maggie, yeah. uh, on the uh, Blackhawk Tower, mm -hmm. how's come that's at 95% and then drops down to 90 and then 85? Aren't they considered also? That was the what we negotiated. The okay, TIF rebates, a, what we negotiated that's with That's my next question. Then if their assessed values go up, because mm -hmm. you got the same assessed value on them. Correct. For We're assuming years. their assessed value at this point in time doesn't go up. We, we assume the project is complete and the assessed value does not go up. But as the assessed value does go up, maybe through natural appreciation. Then, then the rebate will be higher. The rebate will be higher. That is okay. correct. Okay. Yes. And there is, there is such thing as natural appreciation. Va values yeah. just go up as other things in and around the market that are similar or that our other counties are doing. You may see a natural appreciation. We know that the 400,000 was to finish up the project and that's why that was quite a big bump. We don't anticipate that large of an increase um, in the coming years. Uh, if we go to our yellow pages, this is where we talk about the actual TIF that is going to be certified. So the 2013 general obligation urban renewal bonds that are outstanding are paid with TIF receipts and we show that you're going to bring in the principal and interest as well as um, the 2017 are paid with TIF receipts. So what we're doing is showing you that those two bond issues, we do ask for TIF receipts for that and that's where we have that taller column that says transfer to general obligation. Leslie knows this, but that gives her a reminder that when TIF money comes in, she needs to bring some of that money into her debt service fund to help pay that debt. You also have a number of inner fund loans that you've done, and that's really meaning that to do a project, you've borrowed front funds from yourself, and you're gonna pay those funds back with TIF. Those all come across your desks here at the council for, um, uh, for approval, and so what we're showing here is we've got a couple on page one, and we have uh, quite a few amount here on page two, <clears throat> along with some residential condos, um, sub fund loans, your low to moderate income, sub fund loans, et cetera. So we have all of those in line to be paid back with TIF. That's how they are originally established as interfund loans. And so those get paid back with TIF. We bring in the rebates because we're saying that money needs to come from TIF. And at the far right there then, we've got an arrow drawn to fiscal year 20. It appears that you need to certify around $1,271,098. And I always say around. Um, I wanna remind you just like anything else, if you uh, have someone that's, some property that's in the TIF district and they don't pay their taxes, you don't receive those TIF funds. And so um, we always say the word around or approximately because uh, your finance director may increase your asking slightly, uh, may round up um, a thousand, few thousand, if there's not a, a healthy TIF cash balance uh, that is outstanding. And that's really just so that they, all of those debts can be paid, um, even if someone would maybe not pay their taxes and you wouldn't get those dollars that you're asking for. So, okay. Just a couple more sections here and then we'll leave you to your meeting. Uh, the green pages is where we talk about general obligation debt capacity. And this is very important as cities plan and look ahead to projects that they want to do. We're going to look at column number two, and that's fiscal year 19, and read straight down. You have a property or an actual valuation here in the city of $275 million. And that at 5%, that is the statutory debt limit by the state of Iowa, that is $13,789,000 of debt that you can have outstanding, general obligation debt. Principal only is what we have to count. We have general obligation bonds of $6,210,000 outstanding. And then this is where we show those annual appropriations rebates. So together, this year it's about $70,940 you're gonna pay back in this fiscal year a million sixty thousand dollars of general obligation debt. You're also gonna pay that seventy thousand nine forty back in that rebate. So this leaves you at the end of the fiscal year not obligated um, debt capacity of eight million six hundred and thirty nine thousand eight hundred dollars. It's a pretty healthy number. 
the 20% there, the below, the $2.7 million number, that's really just to say, it's probably in your city's best interest to not issue more than 80% of the debt capacity that you could have. And that, and that really, that 20% is there is just kind of a safety measure. If uh, there would be some kind of a natural disaster or something may come up that you weren't planning on, some kind of a development, this leaves a little money on the table for you to uh, go ahead and, and capture that in capacity. So if we take that off, we're really saying comfortably the city could issue $5,881,000 or about 42% um, is what remains of your capacity. I'm not telling you to go out there and, and do that or anything like that. <laughs> and Leslie is, is saying that as well. But, mm -hmm. but it just kind of helps you in your planning. <clears throat> Things do come up. I had a council call. I, we just did a bond issue for them. Had no intentions of doing anything else. They're way over in southwest Iowa. And all of a sudden, um, they got a call from a company a week after the bond issue is done and says, we need you to put in some infrastructure, but we're going to bring a $7 million plant to your community. Well, that's fantastic, but it's $1.2 million of infrastructure. So things come up, and that's why we have this as, a, as kind of a planning tool for you to look at and say, can we afford that? What does it look like? How does this all work? So this does go on for two pages, and I do want to point out that you grew by 6% last year. It was a very healthy growth rate for the city and your actual valuation. And so um, we, we do keep it conservative, and so we did build a growth rate to be uh, sort of on average with maybe over the last, you know, seven to 10 years. And we show that by uh, column number 11, you're out of debt. That's not good for me as your municipal advisor, but uh, doing nothing else, you would be out of debt by uh, that time frame. So the last section of this report is um, our blue pages and column number two again. The blue I wanna remind you is anything that grows over and above this desk. So this desk is our base value in our TIF district and everything sitting on top of it that has grown above, that's increment. Those are the dollars that you can capture. And so what we're showing here is the <coughs> incremental value in that TIF district. In the TIF district, you have $85 million of growth in commercial or increment in commercial property, about $7.3 million of industrial, right around $900,000 of personal property and ag. That may just be some ag land that's sitting in the TIF area, still deemed, uh, still classified ag. You have $51.9 million of residential property in your TIF district incremental wise, and about $5 million um, of multi-residential. We would assume that is the addition. Uh, you can see that grew significantly over last year. That would be the addition of a Millennium and Black Hawk Tower coming in there because those are both multi-residential. This produces about $123 million of TIF value at the TIF tax rate of $27.54. That is about $3,403,000 of TIF that is available to you on an annual basis. You are using about $1,075,000 for general obligation debt, $70,940 for those TIF rebates, and you're using about $255,000 in fiscal year 19 for those inner fund transfers that you have. This means you're not claiming right around the $2 million mark, $1,997,000. Again, not telling you to go out and claim those dollars. Um, the, the valuation that makes up those dollars, um, because you've kept your askings right around the same level for so many years, the valuation that makes up that ask, uh, those dollars there that are left over, those are flowing back into your budget, the county's budget, and the school district's budget. So you're not only, you're capturing what you need to <coughs> capture, but as growth has happened in your TIF district, those dollars really have increased slightly, and that just means everyone is feeling a little bit of growth, and that's good. That's really the way TIF is, is supposed to work. Your TIF district grew by about 1.44%, um, and so we, we put in a growth rate of about three quarters of a percent there. I wanna point out though, even though you grew, uh, it says by only 1.44%, part of that is Multi-residential, you grew, but then they knocked multi-residential down a little bit. The, the, the taxable uh, valuation on that is down. So that uh, stunts, let's say, your growth rate just a little bit um, for, for the year in increment. With that, um, I would answer any questions that you have about this report. 
but we're always um, appreciative. You have a great staff to work with um, when putting together this report for you and, and double checking everything. And uh, if there's any questions in the future, any capital planning that uh, you need from us, you can always just reach out and we'll help you with that information as well. Any questions, any comments? Good report. Thank you. Clear as mud, right? Good. <laughs> and later on, one of the last things on the agenda is we're going to certify just 1.3 million of that. Uh, what was it? Two point something that we could, or three point something that we could. Right. Yeah. <coughs> three point four we can, but we're going to certify only 1.3. 1.3, and that right. should cover, like I said, you're at about a million two seventy one is what you really need. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Don't speed going home. <laughs> I do. We usually drive home now. <laughs> All right. Item number four is to consider resolution hiring Cody Schluter as a police officer. Cody's been sitting there patiently. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cody. That was the first test. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make it through a council meeting. Make it through a council meeting. Motion to approve. Support. Motion to support. Any discussion? Well, thank you for wanting to work for us. Mm -hmm. yep. Roll call. Raleigh? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Motion carried. Thanks, Cody. Thank you start sure. Tomorrow. Chief, when are you planning on starting them? Uh, we're looking at at the end of this month, we'll get them going. Black Friday, I thought we talked about. We're, we're thinking somewhere around that, uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving weekend, that maybe that following Monday. So the 26th is what we're shooting for. So you got any vacation time coming? Uh, I got a little bit to use up. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> use <much>. it. Because <laughs> you'll probably get overworked here for a while. <laughs> All righty. Well, I'll look forward to uh, swearing you in when that time comes. All right, item number five is consider the purchase of a ring saw for public works department. The amount of $3,485. So moved. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? Aye. Motion carried. Item number six is consider payments to our associates for engineering services related to the wastewater treatment project. And lift station replacement project, nineteen thousand five hundred thirty-eight dollars and forty-two cents, and eight thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. So moved. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Lees. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Raleigh. Aye. Haymeyer. Aye. <clears throat> Item number seven is consider payment to Ferguson Waterworks for the water meter replacement project and the amount of. Oh, what did I write down? Is it one thousand six hundred twenty dollars? Yeah. So, <coughs> so moved. Support. support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Waterman. Aye. Raleigh. Aye. Please. Aye. Kate Meyer. Aye. Motion carried. Item number eight is consider right of way permit for Central Link to install infrastructure in the city's right of way along South Gear. That'd be in front of Deary's. So moved. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Raleigh. Aye. Heitmeyer. Aye. Lees. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Motion carried. Item number nine is consider right of way permit for Century Link to install infrastructure in the city's right of way along West Agency. That'd be in front of Deary Honda. So moved. Support. Motion to support. Any discussion? Roll call. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? Aye. Motion, Sorry. Car motion carried. Item number 10 is considered right away permit for Danville Telecom to install infrastructure in the city's right of way on South Broadway. And that looks like by Made Right down there. So moved. Support. 
Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? Aye. Nightmare? Aye. Motion carried. Item number 11 is consider resolution approving the placement of street light at the wastewater treatment plant. So move. Report. Motion to support. Any discussion? Roll call. Oh, well, I, I'm still trying to catch up. You guys are too <laughs> fast tonight. Who <laughs> made that motion? Uh, okay. Royce did. I think I Al seconded okay. it. Okay. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? Aye. Hi, Mayor. Hi. Please. Hi. Motion carried. Item number 12 is consider resolution providing for a reduction of interest rate for the general obligation water improvement bond. And the state has notified us saying they uh, have got a new interest rate. They want to lower it from 3% to 1.75%, which gives us a savings of about $28,887. So move. Support. The motion with support. Well, Please. I think we have to do. I think we oh, we have to do not. We have to do two resolutions. Yeah, I think we need to do. Uh, this, this is just the lower the one. This so. is the letter explaining that what happened, but we'll have to do two resolutions for each, a resolution for each one of them. Okay. Well, that's the next thing then. Yeah. Well, isn't it all? Then. Thirteen is a resolution for the reduction of interest rate. Well, and twelve is providing for reduction of interest rate. Did you want a motion on it? Well, the right. Okay, it's resolution providing for the reduction of interest rate for the general obligation water improvement bond. And 13 is the interest rate for the water revenue bond. Different types of bond. Yeah. What now? The, the, first, the first one we're going to act on is the um, in reduction of interest rate for the general obligation water improvement bond. And then the next one we're going to do is the reduction of interest rate for the water revenue bond. Different types of bond. There's two different types of bonds. And but they're both reductions. Yes. Right. Both so are. Yeah. They're both <laughs> reductions. Okay. We just got done with 12, correct? Well, we, we, we haven't voted on 12 yet. Yeah. But there's a, there was a motion and a second for that. Mm -hmm. So, any discussion? Roll call. Raleigh? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Now we're going to do the resolution for the reduction of interest rate for the water revenue bond. So move. Support? Motion to support. Any discussion? Roll call. Aye, Meyer. Aye. Please. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Raleigh. Aye. Motion carried. Item number 14 is to consider the first reading of an ordinance amending the city code pertaining to interference with official acts. Now, all of these are due because the state. Yeah, these are changes. from yeah state passes bills that affect our code, and this just keeps our code up to date. So moved. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Lees. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Raleigh. Aye. Heitmeyer. Aye. Motion carried. Item number 15 is to consider first reading of an ordinance amending the city code pertaining to water service disconnections. So moved. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Motion carried. Item number 16 is to consider first reading of an ordinance amending the city code pertaining to texting or using mobile telephone while operating a commercial vehicle. So moved. Support. The motion was support. Any discussion? Roll call. Raleigh? Aye. Knightmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. 
Motion carried. Item number 17 is considered a first reading of an ordinance amending the city code pertaining to cigarette and tobacco permits. So moved. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Brawley? Aye. Motion carried. Item number 18 is considered first reading of an ordinance amending the city code pertaining to alcoholic beverage control. So moved. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Motion carried. M number 19 is considered first reading of an ordinance amending the official zoning map by rezoning a portion of ground at the corner of North Gear Avenue and Mulberry Lane from A1 to R3. And this went through planning and zoning and they didn't see any problems with it. PNZ held a hearing and um, didn't see any issues with it. The, de person, the developer um, plans to, re to subdivide this area into three lots and in order to do that, he had needs to have the rezoning so that um, the lots can be smaller than four acres apiece. So that's just incorporating that area, and it does match the zoning that's already across the street on Mulberry Lane. So it's not a spot zoning. It's just extending that R3 zoning to cross the street. So move. Support. Oh. Thank Motion you. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Motion carried. Item number 20 is consider resolution naming depositories and establishing maximum fund amounts, which, as you can see in the resolution, that were maximum deposit amounts. FM Bank of Trust would be $6 million. Two Rivers Bank of Trust would be 10 million, I, I paid the Iowa Public Agency Investment Trust, 2 million, and Bancorp, 1,000. So moved. Support. Motion to support. Any discussion? Roll call. Raleigh? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Motion carried. Item number 21 is consider resolution authorizing an annual appropriation payment to campus community developers. That is the payment that, actually there's two resolutions here, isn't there? Yeah. Well, there's one resolution that has both of them in the same resolution. Is it both of them? Yes. It's 69793 for Blackhawk and 10757 for Millennium. Oh, a total of 80,550. Yeah, okay. okay, I see it now. Yeah. Still move. Try support. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Meyer. Aye. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? Aye. Motion carried. Item number 22 is to consider def uh, the TIF debt recertification for fiscal year 2019-2020. And here, we're recommending to certify 1.3 million. Support, board. motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Lees? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Motion carried. And in the packet there, Leslie has a breakdown of where all that money's going and to whom. And then item 23 is to consider the state TIF report for 2017-2018. So moved. Support. Motion with support. Any discussion? Roll call. Waterman? Aye. Raleigh? Aye. Heitmeyer? Aye. Lees? Aye. <clears throat> Motion carried. Any old business? Anyone wish to address council matters we did discuss or didn't discuss? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So bit.
support. Motion to support. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.